Hey folks, David here, and in this tutorial video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about MainStage's additional downloadable content, and I'm gonna explain how the legacy and compatibility content actually works in MainStage 3. Uh, it's MainStage 3, so obviously there's been a MainStage 2 and a MainStage 1, and MainStage uh, contains the same basic guts as Logic Pro, which is on version 10 right now. So Logic 9 had Main Stage 2 and Logic 8 had Main Stage 1. So uh, when Main Stage 3 and Logic 10 came out, uh, Apple wanted to make sure that folks' existing projects and sounds were going to be compatible uh, with the new version of Logic in Main Stage. So they include a section of legacy content, uh, both sample-based content, presets, and uh, plugins and effects uh, that are kind of available underneath the surface but they're not easily visible. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can access that content today, show you where it is, because there's actually some really cool and super easy to use stuff in there. Uh, there's some really great low CPU usage plugins and sounds that can get you great sounds uh, with just a couple of clicks so you don't need to have as much sound design knowledge to utilize. And then the other question I'm gonna answer today is uh, what main stage sound library content is actually like, how to use it, how to make sure that you have what you want and don't have what you don't need. Uh, because I run into folks all the time, uh, when you first download main stage, main stage asks if you want to download the essential sound library content. And people say that sounds like a good idea. So they go ahead and download it and then they never think about downloading anything again. But the truth is that there's more content that might be available to you uh, if you don't download everything immediately that you may never know you're missing until you try and load a patch from somebody else and you get a sample missing dialog box or something like that. So I have uh, my Sunday Keys template open today. And uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is the sound library because this ties into the legacy section. So to access the sound library content, you wanna go up here to main stage three on your toolbar. And then down here, you see this drop down that says sound library. Now, if you have a bunch of space available on your hard drive, clicking download all available sounds is a super easy way to just make sure that you have everything available to you. If you're not worried about space, just go ahead and click it. Stop watching this video, you're done. Uh, well, keep watching the video because I'm gonna talk about legacy plugins in a second, but this is a really easy way to just get it all done. If you're having issues with your sound library, samples not showing up, sounding real funky, uh, then you can hit this reinstall sound library button to kind of reset your system, get everything reinstalled. Uh, kind of a fresh start. And that's not a bad idea if you have issues with samples cutting in and out or whatever. But uh, what we're going to click on right now is Open Sound Library Manager. And you have to be connected to the internet when you do this. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to even access the Sound Library Manager. Uh, so you're going to click on Open Sound Library Manager, and it's going to come up like this. This is the Sound Library Manager. See at the top, it says Additional Content Packages. And then over on the right, whether or not they are installed is underneath Status. So you can see that most of this content I have installed, I think I actually have everything installed right now, but if you had some stuff that wasn't installed, then you'd see uninstalled as the status here. Or if you had some of it installed, uh, then it might say incomplete. So if you just wanna go ahead and install everything, you can select all uninstalled, um, and that's nice and easy. Uh, but you can see, even though I have it installed, I could reinstall, so you just select the category, and then click install, and it lets you know. This is a 1.56 gigabyte download, um, so it kind of gives you an idea of how much space each section is going to take. So if you're crammed for space, you want to be thrifty, then you can view the individual sections and decide what is going to make sense for you. Uh, the little categories with drop downs next to them let you get more specific. So the orchestral section has some really cool uh, strings and percussion stuff, but you might not need the choir, uh, the woodwind, or the harp sounds uh, because you might not need that for the type of music that you play. So you could get really specific and you could say, I want to download the keyboard, I want to download percussion and strings. And then that would uh, only take up a little bit over a gigabyte of space. Whereas if you were to grab everything uh, in that category, then you're at two and a half gigs of, of uh, memory. So, you know, it's just up to you uh, how thrifty you need to be. The last thing that I'll talk about here is this legacy and compatibility section. So I can select the whole section and you see it's 15 gigs of content you can click the drop down and here you see Logic Studio 2, compatibility sounds and instruments. You got a bunch of GarageBand jam packs, uh, which may or may not be useful to you. Um, if you have GarageBand already downloaded on your computer, you probably already have some of this content, uh, but you may not. 
Uh, if you want to be able to access the legacy plugins and content, then you need to have this legacy and compatibility section downloaded on your computer. And if you haven't already checked it out, I'd recommend at least giving it a download, you know, finding 15 gigs of space and just checking out uh, what is there because there's some really cool stuff. So you can go ahead and download whatever content you choose to. Uh, and then you have this stuff on your hard drive available for you to be able to access. So I'm going to create a new patch here. I'll just drag this out of my set. Minimize that. And I'm going to create a new channel strip. And I just want to show you how to access these plugins. So when, uh, when you've got this stuff downloaded, you actually have it available here in the channel strip inspector down at the bottom or in the uh, patch library browser if you select the patch and look down in the inspector under legacy here. So you can see we can view the logic legacy sounds. And this will all be empty unless you download all that additional content. And you also have GarageBand legacy sounds. So that's, that's one way that you can just see what the earlier iterations of this software included. Uh, but if you want to, you can actually just access the uh, legacy plugins themselves because there's actually different plugins that earlier versions of Logic, GarageBand, and MainStage included. And again, these plugins aren't as feature rich as ES2, EXS24, uh, especially not Alchemy, but they're really CPU light and they're really easy to get started with and, and kind of easy to understand. And uh, it's really hard to mess up one of these plugins because it doesn't give you as many parameters to control. So it's not a bad idea to kind of start here. So the way that you can access these legacy plugins is we're going to go to the input section of the channel strip here on the right side of the screen. And before you click to, to uh, insert an, in, an instrument into that slot, hold down Option on your keyboard. And when you do that, down here you have this legacy section available to you. And there are all of these legacy plugins available under this drop down. Uh, now, if you just click without holding Option, then you don't even get to see those plugins listed. So the only way to view them is to hold Option and click. So there are some really interesting plugins in here. Uh, I really like the Hybrid Basic plugin. It's pretty cool. Uh, I use it a lot. It's got a bunch of like simple waveforms that are really uh, just kind of getting you one sound very easily, and they're really CPU cheap. So if I have a big concert, uh, and I want to make sure it's as efficient as can be, I might use some of these legacy plugins where I wouldn't have otherwise. There's also legacy audio effects. Um, so there's some other audio effects in here uh, that are really interesting. Um, so you might check out some of those as well. Generally, I find the main stage three audio effects to be better than most of the uh, legacy audio effects, but it's fun to play around and see what is available. So that's a little bit about the Sound Library Manager. In MainStage, we talked about how you just go up to MainStage 3, down to the Sound Library, and click Open Sound Library Manager, and you have total control over what you do or don't have downloaded on your computer in MainStage. And the quickest way to just get it all is just to click Download All Available Sounds. And then I talked about how if you want to access the legacy plugins that MainStage has kind of hidden under the surface, then you just click on the input section of a channel strip while holding Option, and then you can navigate down to Legacy and view all of those extra plugins. The same goes for audio effects. If this video was helpful, I would love it if you gave it a like, a comment, or shared it with a friend who you know uses MainStage. And check out all of our templates and resources on our website. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.